Hello. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's doing well today. Just gonna wait a couple more minutes to see if anyone straggles in. <clears throat> I'm currently still unzipping all the downloads for this session, but it should only take a couple more minutes. But in the meantime, hello, welcome. Hope you're all doing well.
All right. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome, everybody. I'm Shadow. This is the Interstellar Garden YouTube channel. And this is a live stream about all the games from the Interstellar Game Jam number five, which is a, was a five day long uh, game making little sprint where the theme was retro. There you go. That's the theme right there. <clears throat> but yeah, the uh, submissions closed a couple days ago, and right now we are currently in the review period of the game. So I will be taking this opportunity and playing through as many games as possible. And by as many games, I mean all the games, just not all in one live stream. I'm going to break it down into about 15 games per stream, roughly, and it'll be broken into four different streams. So this is the first one. Tomorrow there'll be another one and then the day after and the day after at different times so that way anybody can kind of come and catch it at their own time <clears throat> yeah before we get started on any of that though i did want to shout out a couple of folks that helped kind of bring all this together so first up is uh, design buddies which is a discord community where you can kind of go and you know, find some jobs in the design field, um, or just like any like kind of like artistic field. Uh, they have like resources there that will help you out with uh, growing in those uh, in those fields. And uh, yeah, you can go in there, make some friends. There's a whole bunch of events that they host, and yeah, link for that will be in the description. Um, and since this is all a, we're still in the review period for all these games that you're about to see for this game jam. If you are a participant in the game jam. You can go ahead and rate these games yourself. Um, Post Jam Productions, they're going to be hosting review swaps. So you can go into their Discord, and that is a community of like other game jam, like uh, it's like a game jam hub, I would say, where you know they kind of keep an eye out for like major game jams and have like these review swapping opportunities. Um, they, you know, were nice enough to help us out, and so you can go over there and exchange your games with other Interstellar Game Jam participants and yeah get your game rated by them uh yeah link for that is also in the description <clears throat> and uh finally uh interstellar garden themselves which which is us we you know put this thing together for y'all and if you, anyone wants to help support future events like this or the game studio side of things or any like one-on-one -on -one kind of opportunities you can check out the patreon for Interstellar Garden in the description below as well. Uh, you also get like a an exclusive Discord role if you were to do that, and yeah, can kind of stand out in the community as a as a thank you for your patronage. <clears throat> but yeah, that's uh enough about all of that. Y'all came here to see me play some games, and I will play them and review them. I won't rate them. I won't like uh, you know give the the stars and everything. If anything, I kind of lock that permission for myself, so that way you know it doesn't accidentally happen. <clears throat> but yeah, let's start getting into it. E. So these are all the games that were submitted into the jam. I still have to kind of go through a few of them to make sure that they. Uh, you know, are actually playable. Uh, for the most part, though, I think this first batch is completely playable. So we'll be starting, uh, you know, we'll be going through it in submission order. So we're starting at player two has disconnected, doing 15 games. So we'll be ending on Moon Kite. Unless, like, any of these games are unplayable, then we'll kind of just uh, see if we can get it working in a future stream and then just kind of skip ahead and do one of these. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, we'll try to keep it to like 15 games per stream, so that way we can kind of uh, chunk this down at a, at a reasonable rate. Probably spend about 15 minutes on average on each of the games, but yeah, let's check out this first game here. Player 2 has disconnected by I Will Probably Die. Um, can you handle your own doubts? Oh look, I can rate it from my perspective. Whoops. Well, don't worry, I won't. None of them have been rated, don't worry. Um, yes, yeah, check out the game page real quick before everyone starts yelling at me for not checking the game pages. 
After your player 2 died, you just can't focus, so you try and use nostalgia and retro games, uh, games to try and cope with the loss. Can you deal with your own doubts? This game was made for Interstellar Game Jam number 5. This game was made with Unity HDRP, so lower performing computers might suffer. Oh, and there's no web build. And this game has uh, questionable depictions, so hopefully it's not too, too bad. But it looks like I was gonna say Pong, but no, no, that's that's the that's the next game. <laughs> it just has very similar art style. Um, I feel like the main one. Uh, but yeah, I should have that one already, kind of ready to go. We'll just jump right into it and see what see what it's all about. Oh, I like how there's the music slider right away. That's nice. <laughs> also, I I I am playing on an ultra wide monitor, so I do apologize if you see like black bars in the top and bottom of your screen. I don't have a a regular regular monitor. I'm sorry. And this might also to make it so some games look a little different. I feel like there should be more that I'm not seeing in the top and bottom. That's okay. It's a little trippy. The uh, the art, how like kind of like all these layers. All right, let's just adjust that a little bit. If y'all cannot hear anything, let me know. If you if you cannot hear the game, or if you can't hear me, let me know. Yeah, I guess we we just jump right into it. I didn't see controls listed anywhere. Oh, there there they go. W A S D to move, shift to sprint. Go to the forest and touch the TV by the lake. Space to jump and control to crouch. Okay, TV by the lake. Why is this all red? Where's the lake? I'm guessing over there. So we'll head over there. Alright. I like the mountain range. <clears throat> yeah, you said this was made using HDRP. You can kind of kind of tell. My screen is jittering a little bit. I don't know if it's too much grass to process or, or if my computer's not strong enough. <laughs> Whoa. the 80s I do like the dialogue especially the inclusion of dialogue the day night cycle is up This game is making me sad. Oh, before I move any further too, I like the inclusion of the day-night cycle. Uh, I will say the textures aren't rendering that entirely properly. 
at least uh, like the ground and the trees you can see are still like pretty well lit uh, but the grass is dark and the sky is dark oh it's just uh, something I noticed this lake is far Touch the TV by the lake. Ah, I wanted to jump on the rock. There it is, the TV, the lake. Touch, touch, touch. How do you play? Oh? Are we supposed to go up? Player 2 has been disconnected. Find the radio on the other side of the lake. Oh, I see it. Can I just... Can I just walk through the lake? Oh, I can just walk on the lake. I am Jesus. Reincarnate. Some of those trees are doing the, sh the nighttime fine. I like the reflections on the water too. I like the light kind of telling you where to go. Wait, what's that? What is that? Did I miss that? That's far. What is that? It's like a, a billboard or something, like a scoreboard that I might have missed. Because I wanted to just walk straight across, I guess. We'll get the radio in just a second. Let's check what this thing is first. Weird. What is that? Is that an Easter egg? What is that? It's the radio. This is the texture for the radio. Oh, I, I found the radio. But it's on the other side. Okay. 
<laughs> That's cool. Let's go touch the radio. I like the inclusion of the different sound effects. You got like water, you have some music in the background, the footsteps, you can hear the footsteps. You know, it's little things like that, that that not every game has. So I like the little attention to detail there. I mean, it's not completely accurate sound effects for the footsteps because it sounds like I'm walking on wood even though I'm walking on water. But that's okay. That's just a little nitpick. Radio. Oh, what the heck? Just a gas station in the middle of nowhere. What's happening? That's creepy. Nostalgia couldn't save her then, so it won't save her now. Retry? What do you mean retry? Am I supposed to go somewhere? Oh! Oh, whoa. Oh, I have to try to get through the door before that reaches me. Well, what what did that say? Useless, just give up. She can't come back. There's no point in continuing. Everyone's just jumping around. Hey, we did it, I think. Oh, snap. Please don't let nostalgia control your actions and don't use nostalgia as a coping method. That was dark. I like the little fire effect in the TV. Interesting. I had the feeling that something was chasing me. I didn't know it was just a big wall of text that was right behind me. I was expecting a jump scare. But I hear some of these games are a bit more spookier than one would anticipate. But yeah, that was uh, Player 2 has disconnected. It was a, a, a dark tale, it seems, of someone trying to cope with the loss of a friend. Yeah. Like I said, I do like the, the use of the uh, game. The last level, though, could be, I don't know, a bit better with the sound effects. Because it did feel like something was chasing you, but uh, it was just on a loop. I thought it was like something like as it was getting close, it was getting closer, and I did something to kind of jump away from it. Uh, but yeah, very interesting concept, you know? I like the use of, uh, you know, going back, using nostalgia, and that's your kind of interpretation of the theme with retro. But yeah. Do -do -do. 
do do boom. Yep, and that was uh, made again by I will I will probably die. You will see them uh, hanging on the Discord, I'm sure. And uh, again, I won't be rating anything live. I'll be coming back to it at a different point in time, off stream, and doing that. But yeah, that was uh, very interesting for sure. Was not expecting that, especially as the first game of uh, you know going back in time in that regard. So, but yeah. One thing too I wanted to kind of point out <clears throat> as as we kind of look through all these games too is especially since we're like in the beginning uh, you'll notice uh, like half of these I would say are like downloads for sure but uh, depending on like if they're like this one I'm pretty sure is a, a WebGL build for example you can see it gets a, a bit more ratings than those that are just downloads but by submitting first the people that have the download page, like if you compare these two, uh, you can tell the difference, you know, it's not a lot, but it's doubled just by submitting a bit earlier. It gets a bit more exposure on the on the, on the the page here. So like if I go by like popular, you can see like this one's kind of up on top. If you go by most rated, it's not on the top exactly, but it's still up there in, the, in like the top half. But yeah, that's just uh, something I wanted to point out as we continue on. And uh, like I said too, if anyone misses the live stream, I would be timestamping the video depending on what game uh, is being played in, during that time. So it'll be, it'll be a bit easier to kind of keep track of everything. But yeah, that was uh, Player 2 has disconnected. I'm going to... I gotta check something real quick and I'll be right back. We'll do second game in just one moment. Give me one second. All right, sorry about that. I am back. Next up, we have Analog Pong by Acorn Studios. Made using GDevelop. Let's check out the Jam page. We got some uh, screenshots, Pong, and from what it looks like, it uh, has a bit of a bit of a horror twist. This version of Pong is not what it seems. What horrors could lie within such a simple game? We already own you, you already one of us. Transmission received, good luck human. Made for the IGJ5 in 48 hours, that's why it's short. Play a retro game with a retro aesthetic and a retro analog horror story. Thanks for playing, probably going to come back to this after the jam, so look out for that. Let's try this out. This is gonna be kinda of tiny, so I'm gonna try to full screen this if I can. Oh, it's off to the side. Uh, we'll probably do that anyways. Much must watch tutorial. Let's check it out. This is weird that it's just shifted to the side. Hello. Sick. Whoa, thank you. Interesting. Uh, 
Interesting. I like how the, the World Health Organization had had to put a disclaimer in this game. Uh, let's see. Let's try it out. I'm worried. I'm not a fan of horror. And I do not like that the screen is shifted all the way to the left. But that's okay. We're going to try it out. It's just Pong, right? What's, 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 what's so wrong with Pong? It, it should be fine. It's Pong. Press space to start. Oh, okay. Now the screen fixed itself. Okay. Oh, I, I lost. We lost. Hey. I'm going to get jump scared really hard, aren't I? Okay, now it's 1-1. One, one. Oh, wait, they got closer. I don't like that. Were they always this close? This is too easy. I don't like how easy this is. I don't like that. I will admit wholeheartedly that I'm not a fan of whatever. Is Microsoft Sam? That was Microsoft Sam. That was a cameo appearance by Microsoft Sam. Holy heck! I I recognize that voice anywhere. Oh my gosh! Interesting. Thanks for playing. Sorry if it was short and on a strict deadline. Rate honestly and accounting for the deadline and leave a comment. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Hoping to come back to this game later. Bye. Nice. How do you get out of here now? Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. That had a Microsoft Sam cameo. That's badass. But yeah. That was uh, interesting. Adding a little horror twist into it. It was weird because my, my, for whatever reason, when I full screened it, it was just pushing it to the side. So it looked like the paddle on the right was a bit closer. And now I noticed a little jump scare in the background there. I didn't, I didn't realize I was there before. That's subtle. That's clever. But yeah, that was, uh, that was a quick one, actually. Yeah, that was pretty much Pong. Uh, Analog Pong, sorry, by Acorn Studios. Are you not hearing any audio from the game? Uh oh. Hold on a second. I thought it was coming through. Let me check one more time. No. Wow. There is no game audio. Or, like, in my end. That's my fault. Let me fix that real quick. Apologies. Give me one moment.
Alright, there we go. That should do it. Apologies. I mean, I guess since that was a short game, it would just replay it real quick. Uh, I do feel bad because the last game we didn't really hear the audio then, so I'll... Ooh. I guess we'll have to showcase that a little bit as well. We can go back to it at the end of the stream real quick. Uh, but let's kind of just do this one more time with the audio. And... Hello. Welcome to the Pond Tutorial. Pong is a simple game with easy to control movement and simple gameplay. Just get the ball back and forth. Press W to make your paddle go up and S to make it go down. In this rendition of the game you compete against a simple artificial intelligence. Good luck. Warning, side effects of playing this game that you may experience before during war, after your session may include uneasiness, nausea, vomiting, loss of personality, darkness of madness, internal bleeding, loss of emotion, loss of hearing, loss of social ability, and developing the following illnesses, dementia, cancer, schizophrenia, leprosy, and fire. Remember this is not an exhaustive list and does not cover everything for legal reasons. Stay safe and play game in moderation. This is a required message by the United States Department of Health in junction with the World Health Organization regarding recent cases. Discontinuation may be imminent. Nice. Yeah, we'll just play through it real quick. I will say, right off the bat, um, I know this is just a simple Pong game, but if uh, you're looking for feedback and criticisms, I would try to make the AI a bit smarter, so that way there's a bit more competition, I suppose. Also, so the reason why I said it looks a little off is because it was started off like the screen only had like this much space. Human, there is no place for you here. You must run, hide, do anything before it's too late. They may hear, they may come, but you need to run before things progress. You are not safe here, human. You need to flee. Human, we are here for you, human entity. We know he told you. Told you to run. It is too late, human. We are here. Even if you close the game, we will find you, human, and you will become one of us. Ha. 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 Hey, uh. We are drawing closer, human. And there he is. You can't escape down. us. The time now is not for running. It is to embrace your fate. Come closer. Now. We don't bite. And that's the game. That was Analog Pong. Sorry for the lack of audio before, but uh, we'll do uh, an audio run the next time around. Um, for the first game, we'll do it again towards the end of the stream. But yeah, that was uh, Analog Pong. I would say, like, um, the AI needs to be a bit improved in my opinion, uh, so I can keep track better of my, like, movements and stuff, make it a little bit trickier. Um, it'll be interesting if, as the AI was getting more points, then kind of the horror element started settling in. So that way it kind of encourages you to want to keep winning, so you can kind of stray away from it. But I guess the whole point is that there is no escape. Also, again, I see the face subtly in the background here. That's interesting. I never, I never noticed that before. Until, until just now. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that's Analog Pong by Acorn Studios. Let's move on to the next game. Next up, we have Mech Hunt. It's a first-person shooter by. FCB Dev. We got some screenshots here. It looks like the main menu right there. It's a first person shooter, so I'm guessing you're the blue robot shooting the red robots. Made in Unreal. Interesting. Let's check out the jam page real quick. Maybe we can see some controls. 
This game is made using Unreal Engine 5. This is my second game. Your goal is simple, but how fast can you do it and what direction will you choose? The game is a first person shooter with retro style graphics. Any and all feedback is appreciated. High score is bugged. Controls are listed in the main menu and in the pause menu. Okay, cool. So we can find out in game. Interesting. Pause in the game does not pause your timer. Yeah, this is a download game, so we'll check out the download folders. And what's that one called? Mech Hunt. And we're going to run anyways. Because we like living life on the edge. Oh, well, there's some music in the background, but it's kind of low. Controls. What do we got? Left mouse click is to fire weapon. Left shift is to dash. E is to open doors. Escape is to pause and unpause, but the timer keeps going. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if they just knew about it while developing it, so they just do it in as well. Uh, tips. Your goal is to find and destroy eight mini mechs. Try not to die in the process. Enemies have a 20% chance of dropping health. Let's get it. I'm guessing WASD to move around. Okay, whoa. It's so dark, I can't see anything. I really can't see anything, holy crap. Oh, I died. I didn't even know I was getting hit. Where's, is that my health bar in the bottom? Oh, there's one right there too. That's okay. That's how I died. That is unforgiving. So that's four out of the eight. Ma oh no, mini max we got this choice. That wasn't even them. I'm also lost. Where am I? I, I actually, I actually. Oh! I actually don't know where I am. The lack of light doesn't help. I don't see a mini mech there. Oh. Oh. I can't see anything. We're just going to close that door. And we're going to close this door. This is a wall. Oh, hey. Interesting. So that's what we gotta do. Where the heck am I? Another one. You gotta really check the corners, but like, I don't even know how I got here because everywhere else has bad guys. Oh, a door. Wait, no, I did. I came through here. See? Okay. See, that's not cool. I'm just gonna die.
Yep, see? I don't even think I keep my my robots in the top left there. Yeah, I destroyed none. Yeah, the atmosphere is extreme, extremely dark. Okay, so this is one little robot in the starting area. Okay, so I would never, I didn't leave the starting area. Is what happened. This game is just very unforgiving. Yeah, do. The second one here okay so each of these rooms i'm guessing has one this looks different okay we're gonna we're gonna try our best here. <laughs> We're not giving him a single chance. Alright, is there a little robot in here? Yep. That makes three. Is there a little robot in here? Is it every room that has enemies has a little robot? No, not that I can see. How many rooms we got in this area? Three. Uh, let's see if there's a little robot in here somewhere. Nothing. More rooms, though. I'm guessing this is one of those dead-end rooms that has, like, one standing by the door. Did I call it, or what? Oh, nope, I didn't. There's more in there. Okay, come on, come on. Using the corner to kind of protect us while we shoot the ears or whatever you call them. Sick. Now we just check for our little guy on the floor. Oh! Oh! Oh, you got me! Okay, there's one hiding in the corner. Nice, nice job. I'm guessing the guy's here. No. Where's the little guy? Alright, nothing here then, I guess. On to the next room. Nothing. Yeah, this place is just so, so dark that I cannot see anything. Hey, there he is. That's... Four? I could have sworn we had four already. I wonder, why are we shooting the little blue robots if we ourselves are a blue robot? attack oh wait did I see one 
I can't see anything. And I think I'm lost again. Close. We almost we almost ended the run right there. That would have been bad. That would have been real bad. Where's the blue robots? No. Where are my children? I'm trying to shoot them. We're getting our health back, that's good. Nope. Oh, I don't like that. This place is so dark, it could be a horror game if it wanted to be. It probably is. That's six. We're missing two. Just gotta backtrack and try to find some doors that we have not opened yet. Good luck finding doors that we haven't opened yet. See, I don't like this. It's it's just too too dark. And this leads to an area that we've been to already. Does this? No, we have an Oh crap. Does the explosion hurt? No. Where are the little ones? Okay, okay, okay. There you are. He's got one more to go. I think we're on this final stretch here. Oh man, I know this is painful to watch because this is painful to play in terms of I can't see much. We got one more. Oh, I heard that. I don't think I got hit. Oh, there he is. Got him. We did it. That was two, three attempts? Was it? Maybe four? There's our score right there. Eight minutes and 46 seconds on that run. I probably will still not be able to beat that run just because I can't remember where I went. The level, like I said, is extremely dark. The music is subtle. It's very background-esque music. Um, you know, there's the shooting sound effect from your gun, from their gun, and then their death animation sound effect. Um, the door opening sound effect, which is nice. Having sound is huge, you know. But the lighting was very, very, very dark. I like the art style, you know. Nothing too crazy, but, like, it's, you know, very, like, uh... I, I know these are 3D models, but there's like some sort of filter that's on that's showing 
it to be more like 8-bit, I guess. Well, not 8-bit at all, but like more and more, more pixelated. There you go, that's the word. More pixelated. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think the idea is there. There needs to be like some sort of uh, feedback for when you get hit. Because I didn't know I was getting hit uh, that first playthrough at all. Until like the second one where I looked at my health bar and I was kind of keeping track of it a bit better. Um, so having like some kind of a sound effect, maybe a little screen shake uh, to play whenever you do get hurt or have like a little another like screen effect pop up maybe. Uh, to kind of help indicate to the player that they just took damage. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little collectible hunting game. It's just very, very dark. That's my my that's my biggest concern. It's just how how dark it is. Um, if you can bump up the lighting in there, you can definitely get a lot uh, away with a lot more in terms of a uh, uh, level design and stuff. Unless you want to keep it that dark, then you can lean more into like the horror elements of it. Um, you know, maybe have something that's chasing you in the dark. Um, but there still needs to be some sort of element where you can see a bit better, like uh, certain lights and stuff. Um, make it a bit brighter in some areas but yeah you can either lean into the more horror aspect of it if you want to keep the lighting a bit darker or brighten things up a bit to make it more uh faster paced because without being able to see where you're going you have to inch around you have to like, kind of hug the walls to kind of know where you're going but yeah like i said i do like that uh shader that you have going on with uh making everything look a bit more pixelated. That's pretty that's pretty neat. But like even in these screenshots you can see like how how dark the gameplay is. Like it's it's very, very dark. I was able to see a bit more than that, but yeah, the the red glow from the enemies are a bit terrifying. And and I, I do mean that in a good way. <clears throat> but if if the whole level is that dark it does make it hard to kinda of see them ahead of time. Or not really, but still. But yeah, that was Mech Hunt by FCB Dev. And again, I won't be rating anything until I'm done with all the live streams. Next up, we have Pixelated Peril. Unfortunately, there's no uh, thumbnail for it just yet, but we can check out the page for it. Created by NZIA. N Nzia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Made using Construct. Yeah, let's check out the page. Pixelated Peril. Press any key to start. <clears throat> There's nothing I can do about the ugly border. Colon P. This game was made for the Interstellar Game Jam 5 under the theme Retro. The game draws inspiration from old Flash games from the NES for its graphics. You have to avoid spikes and enemies while trying to navigate towards the goal and collecting coins along the way. Controls, arrow keys to move, escape to go back to title. An 11th level unlocks if you get all 10 coins. It's my first non-platformer game. Yippee. All right, let's try it out. We'll try going into full screen for that as well. All right. Um, okay, there we go. There's no full screen option, uh, so we're gonna have to play it through here. All right, so yeah, up, down arrows to move around. Okay, don't touch the spikes. Easy peasy. Do I? Can I touch these, or do they hurt me? They hurt me, but it doesn't matter because I got the coin. Okay. Complete. We gotta get through 11 levels, it said. Ooh, close. Easy. Oh wait, was there a coin that I missed in that last one? There may have been a coin I missed. 
restart. I think I missed a coin in that level. That says coin number one, complete. There's the coin, okay, I did miss it, okay. the goal, touch the spikes. Interesting. Ooh, that was close. Easy. What the heck? Okay, this level is just tricky. But why? 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 to like fiddle with my keyboard. Now 
one's also just really tricky. You have like a frame to kind of get past that one. the secret level. Oh, I died. <laughs> oh, they're just roaming everywhere. They're, they have no... they defying the laws of physics. They're not supposed to do that. Hey, There we go. Ending 100% with 49 deaths. Could have been more. But yeah. Created by NZF, 100% ready, ending 10 out of 10 coins, only took me less than 400 seconds. Made for the Interstellar Garden Jam 5, well done. Yeah, I like the uh, the pixelated look on there. The it took me a second, I was, I was trying to figure out why these were colored differently. And it turns out like the blue or the purplish, bluish, lavenderish colored ones are always going up and down, and the red ones are always going left and right. It'd be interesting if those uh the pattern on them, the eye the eyes, I guess they are. Um I guess it'd be cool if like those are like sideways for these to kinda indicate that they were going left and right. Because at first I thought that was just like a little pause button. I'm like, oh I wonder what these are, like just moving blocks that move me or something, but it turns out they destroyed me. I mean, that's fine that they don't uh, convey that right away, but uh, yeah, having a little like direction indicator could help with, uh, at least in the beginning, figuring out which ones do what. Uh, and there's certain areas later on in the game that have a bit more chaotic, like, you know, ups, ups and downs and the lefts and rights kind of intersecting a lot. And you have to like really figure out like which ones, uh, I mean, like I said, the colors do help, but um, in terms of like ass accessibility, uh, there are some people that can't really see colors all that well. I, I fortunately can, uh, but you know, again, there are like other people that cannot, and having things like that can help display like where, uh, which way they're heading towards. Besides just using color. But yeah, that was a uh, pixelated peril by Enzia. Definitely do show off some uh, some screenshots of the game too to display it a little bit better, but uh, yeah, well done. Next up we have Solar Strike by Fluki, and I'm pretty sure these are this is a download game. Uh, yeah, let's check out that game page real quick. Solar Strike is a retro arcade shooter set in a floaty space theme. Defend yourself from attacking alien spaceships and avoid being hit by dangerous asteroids floating around. This game was made over one weekend for the fifth Interstellar Game Jam. I hope you have fun playing. Thank you. I hope I do too. Oh yeah, that's another download game, so let's, uh... Oops. I think I closed it by accident. Let's check this out real quick. Alright. Which one's this one? Solar Strike. Alright. Here we go. Run anyway. A 
it's not running anyways. Go away. One second, let's try to get this to run. see what's going on here so I'm just getting messages what's going on oh it worked now okay Seems like it's working now. Oh, there we go. By Fluky Dev for Interstellar Game Jam 5. Heck yeah. Select spaceship. Okay, what's this? Hi, hello. Oh, reset high score. <laughs> Why is this said hello? Select spaceship. Okay, what do we got? We got options. That's what we got. Alright, so we got... Nova seems like the basic one. Two health, six speed. Handling is up there too. It's a pretty quick fire rate and damage of one. So basic kind of. Uh... Oh, and you need. Oh, okay, you gotta unlock these. Gotcha. I wonder why these are two times if they're about the same rate as the other one. But I guess we gotta play the game and find out, huh? Here we go. Try that again. Hey, we got him. Get hit by both bullets, it counts as two damage, or did I just have one health at that point? I don't know. does count as two damage. Interesting. Oh, I think I have enough for a new ship. Oh, I died. That guy just takes out two damage in one shot. Oh, 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 oh,
You can't go backwards. You can only turn and go forward. different ship is the question oh score required 50 500 jeez all right so we got to get 50 let's try to get 50 75 though, okay, so we got the new ship. We need 200 to get the next one, but it looks like the fire rate, every one of these has two guns, whereas the other one only had just one, so this should make it a lot easier. So let's try it out. There we go, yeah, we got two guns, so it's gonna make it way easier. say that but it shoots way slower now.
I died. Yeah, the, the fire rate on this one is a lot slower, but that's okay. We can still use it to our advantage. time with the ship and if it doesn't work out we'll go back to that first one. Try that first ship. This one's a little too tricky. Because that one still has damage one, so I'm doing the same damage. It's just shooting sl slower. I mean, it says higher fire rate, but I feel like it's not. Yeah, this one feels way faster. relying too much on the shield. 
Let's try it one more time. If we can get 200, then, then we can try out that new ship. If we don't get 200, then we'll just leave it as is. But this game does have a good amount of replayability, I will say. Okay, no, last try, for real this time. Last try, last try. That was a fun game. I like that one. Like I said, it does have replayability. I, I wonder if I come back to it in the future of these stats saves. I can just kind of keep working towards the other ships. Uh, yeah, this one has high speed. This one's lower speed. Uh, the fire rate, it says it's higher. I f oh, well, I guess it takes longer. Okay, that makes sense. So that is the, I guess this one's the fastest in terms of speed. It has the most HP. Most damage, higher fire rate, better handling, better speed, better HP. Yeah, that one's like the, the one you really want to get to, for sure. But this one's like more of a trade-off between these two. Or maybe I'm just not playing it right. I don't know. We'll see. All these other guns, or all these other ships have two guns on them. I've been using the one with one. I don't know, I've just been shooting faster, I guess. But yeah, um, I'll leave it at that for right now. Um... But that game was a lot of fun. I did like that one. There is a lack of audio in the game uh, in terms of like music, but there is sound effects, uh, and it keeps it very retro um, with just like the pew pew pew, and then the pew, pew, with the asteroids and all the impacts and everything. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, um, well done, Fluky. That was Solar Strike by Fluky, a little arcade space shooter made for a game jam. But yeah, that was used making uh, using Unity. Nice. Alright, we still got a good chunk of games to go through, so let's uh, let's keep this train going. Next up, we have Robotron 2024, a retro game for a retro jam. I think this is download only, but we'll check out the page anyways. Robotron 2084, I thought it was 2024, but that's fine. It's all, all, it's an 80s classic arcade is what it is. This version was created for the Interstellar Game Jam 5 with the theme Retro. The game uses WASD for movement and IJKL for directional shooting. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Um, the goal of this version of Robotron is to complete 10 levels by rescuing citizens and defeating the final boss, Iron Man, <laughs> at the end. It is a brutally tough game. I've managed to finish it by myself, but it takes some doing. Interesting. So we've got ten levels of of Robotron to get ourselves through. Let's see if uh, my computer will let me play it, or if it'll tell me that it's a a virus that's gonna get me, my computer exploded. Made using Game Maker Studio Two by X Guild. It's the person who made it. <laughs>
that music was incredible. All right, let's uh, new game. Press enter to select. All right, here we go. W A S D and I J K L.
gotta work our way around these guys, pick up the stragglers, pick up the stragglers, that's you, oh boy. ourselves a little path over here.
got so much time still left. Try and beat it. robot does any damage to me. I can at least shoot the robot. Not worrying about getting hit by the robot. That's good. Unless the robot's just straight up not killable, but I think it is. It has to be. I know I can run through it, that gives me a little bit more confidence. I wasn't paying attention. 
bench and dang it. That song is just so catchy, I will say. Like I said, the song in that game was fantastic. The gameplay was nice. It was very satisfying. Um, just there's like certain enemies, you know, the different enemy types. You have like the ones that are one hit, but can sh you can shoot through them. There's ones that are one hit that you cannot shoot through them. There's like these little little tiny bombs. I'm not sure if shooting them did any collateral damage. Um, then there's like those big bruisers that just every time you shoot them, they just move. Uh, those guys were tricky. Um, yeah, I'm just reading here as well. He, uh, the the Iron Man at the end, just keeps producing invincible guys, and the moment it has enough invincibles to cover itself from your attacks, it's over. But it does uh, change color uh, depending on his HP. I didn't realize that. I thought it was. I mean, there was a lot of flashing colors on the screen. I will say, so it was kind of hard keeping track of that. Uh, in terms of a. Uh, Folks who are a little bit sensitive to, to lights like that, they might not enjoy it. But aside from that, the game was... I, I had a lot of fun playing it, I will say. Well done. Well put together. Um, any, like, room for improvement? I will probably say, like, maybe having, like, a, a certain power-up that would maybe allow you to defeat the invincible folks. Um, or if um, scalability and the difficulty for that last mission is a little too hard, uh, maybe not having a certain amount of bruisers spawn after a certain number, uh, so that way you know it can kind of keep it balanced a bit. Uh, but I guess that is part of the difficulty. It is the last level, so it does make sense. Um, but there's just some just some ideas thrown out there. But yeah, that was Robotron 2024. Again, that was really well put together. I did have a lot of fun with that one. So yeah, well done, X-Guild. Alright. <clears throat> I did look at the game page, right? Yeah, yeah, brutally tough. Yeah, it takes some doing. Yeah, I mean, I would have to replay it and make sure I keep better track of my lives as I get to the final boss. Uh, some some levels just kind of got me. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure there was a... Um, like a level up. Not necessarily like level up in terms of getting stronger, but uh, extra lives. If you get a certain amount of points, it seemed like I got extra lives for it. Or at least it sounded like it. There was some sound effect that played after I've gotten a certain amount of, of uh, enemies killed. So that was nice. That's nice. A uh, nice throwback to like the old arcade games. I will say that was really well put together. <clears throat> Next up, we have Retro Drive, and that puts us. Uh, how many games we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're about at the one fifth point, so we'll just keep uh, keep chugging along, like I said. An endless runner game made for Interstellar Game Jam number five, created by Coloristic. This is Retro Drive. Got some screenshots. Check out the game page. Embark on a nostalgic journey through a mesmerizing synthwave universe in this retro arcade-inspired endless runner. Take control of a stylish car as you navigate the neon-lit streets, carefully avoiding obstacles along the way. Controls are A and D to go left or right, or use the left and right arrow keys to control the car. Escape is to pause the game. Controller is left joystick. Oh, I don't have a controller, but that's, that's good that there's controller support. Nice. Uh, the game was made for the Interstellar Game Jam 5, and also my very first game. Congrats, by the way. First games are very important. They're, you know, a huge stepping stone. The fact that you're able to, you know, get a game made is huge. So congrats. Made everything myself except for the car asset and the music, which I downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. 
and then the fonts. Nice. All right, let's uh, let's check it out. Retro Drive. That's this one here, and that should be this one here. Run anyways. Let me just wait for it to load. My computer is going to yell at me. Go away. Just got to just got to give it a moment. Yep. Yep, I know. Go away. Hey, coloristics in the chat. Nice. Welcome. Once the, these pop-ups stop popping up, then I will be able to check out the game. Just uh, any any moment now. Are y'all done? Wow, they just keep popping up. Oh, there we go. Can we full screen it? Yes, we. Whoa, we probably probably shouldn't. Okay. All right, insert coin, spacebar A. Right, we. Sh oh. Oh. Okay, so we got control of it. It's. Can't. Oh. Can't see the car entirely the entire time. Okay, but here we can. Okay, but we just can't see the score. So we'll have to kind of just play without the score for now, it seems. But that's okay. Oh, 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 oh. How much score do I have? That's a good time to check. Whoa. 4,000. Okay, cool. Yo. Oh, I, just, I crashed. Should not have checked my high score. I should be able to get 4,000. Looks like 300 points right there. Let's see if we can break that record. It goes up by the hundreds, okay. Oh, that was a bad call. This is supposed to be full screen, okay. Again, yeah, like my monitor size is different compared to a lot of people, so sometimes playing games in full screen doesn't look proper. Which is partially my fault. I am playing on a non traditional screen size. Alright, here we go. Whoa. Oh, I probably just should have hugged the corner. I was uh, looking at the background and seeing how it's put together. I was thinking it was procedurally generated, but it looks like it's a repeating pattern. I mean, I don't know if that's still procedurally generated or not, if that's what it is. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the background and how the it just repeats itself. Oh, look at that. That was good. That was good driving right there. Uh, even like the the background next to the edges as well. Uh, these though, these obstacles do look like randomized in its procedural generation, more or less, because they're not. I don't. I mean, at least I don't think that they're spawning in the same rate. They might be. I could just be missing that entirely. If that's the case, if these were hand placed or told to spawn in a certain rate. If it ever ends. Let's try to get 10,000 and see what happens.
Uh, I see. I would say that uh, sound effects would go a long way here. Like hearing the car engine, hearing the tires screeching as you're turning left and right. Um, <clears throat> uh, I would say like some additions. I think we hit ten thousand. Some additions could potentially be like a speed increase as the game progresses. The game gets a little faster. Or having certain power-ups that the player can acquire as they are uh, progressing to the game. Like maybe something that just lets them bypass uh, these obstacles, just break through them. Or have a speed boost, or have like a jump ability perhaps. Maybe there could be ramps in the game. They can jump over certain obstacles, add a little uh, verticality to the game. I'm a huge, huge sucker for verticality. I like being going. I like being able to go up and down as well as all around. Although I can't confirm 100%, but I think these were placed, but now the pattern just repeats itself. So I can just kind of get into a rhythm of it. Looks like we're getting close to 20,000 here. Oh yeah, it is an endless runner, so there is no end. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I thought I was going to crash into that one right there. I will say, there's no bugs in this game. That's nice. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, having like a, a speed increase as uh, as the game progresses, like every every ten thousand or something, uh, making it so that way it speeds up. So now it's like, okay, cool. It might be similar patterns, but now that you're going for the higher score, it gets a bit more trickier. I feel like that would help out a bit too. And then like when it gets really really hard, like the really high scores, that's when it's like super like you really have to be moving fast, you know, trying to dodge obstacles, like almost on a timer. Yeah, I guess we'll keep going until I crash into something. I now, like I said, I have a good rhythm going. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I barely touched that one, but... Yep, that's it. That's all it takes. Um... Might be my stream chopping up. But yeah, that was a uh, retro drive. Yeah, uh, like I said, like adding a bit, of, a little bit more difficulty into the game, um, so that way, as the game progresses for longer, longer time, it's harder to reach those higher scores. Um, and adding a bit more sound effects too can go a long way. I know there was some music in there, which is nice. That that does help elevate it. Uh, but that's the only audio. Oh, and the crashing sound as well. Uh, but aside from that, those like those are the only two like audio snippets in the game. Having a few more line or a few more uh, audio tracks in there could help elevate it a lot more as well. But yeah, like I said, well, well done. You know, I, I, there's very, very minimal bugs. The only one I can I can see right now is just uh, the hit box for this seems to be a box instead of like a more of a mesh. Which I know meshes can be very expensive in terms of uh, performance, so it makes sense. But uh, having having clip that right there on the corner that I cannot see, uh, you know, te technically that's a that's an issue because it's not a visible obstacle that I hit. I feel like I should have been able to squeeze past that, but uh, again, that's that's perfectly fine. Either either having the obstacles be more square shaped or having the mesh match the 
the shape of the obstacle you're trying to go for. Uh, there, there's a lot of games. I, I even dealt with that in the game that I'm working on right now, where one of the objectives is a circle, and you were able to hit the corners of the box, even though it was supposed to be a circle collider. But yeah. Well done. That was Retro Drive by Coloristic. And again, if um, if anyone's watching the streams, you can go ahead and check out these games. There should be a link in the description. Even if uh, you know you, you are able to download the game, if it's not for a build that you're able to run, hopefully you can use the stream as some sort of reference and can form your own opinion and can rate it accordingly. Uh, and again, too, I won't be rating these live at all just because i feel like that would be unfair if people want to just copy my rating that wouldn't be that won't be cool so i'm gonna save that for after the streams are done so you'll see a, whole, a huge influx of ratings from me uh like the day before the ratings close <laughs> i'll be using these uh live streams as a reference and having the timestamps in the description once it's uh once it's on vod but yeah next up we have wordress which is Wordle plus Tetris, but also not really. Submitted by Z Zaskoria. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Zaskoria or Jacques Jaskoria. Also, also Dung. I think that's a easier one to say, or just say Zaz. I'm gonna say Zaz or Shaz. I am butchering that. I, I know for sure I'm butchering that. But yeah, made in Godot. And then where'd you hear about us? It just says, hi, Shadow. Hello. How's it going? Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> All right, uh, this one should be a WebGL build, so we'll check out the game page and play it there. Wordris, made in five days for the Insert Seller Game Jam 5. A game inspired when I got stuck making my previous idea for this jam. Realized the idea sucked and start endlessly browsing the assets trying to think of something else. You type in a word and each letter turns into pieces you play in the Tetris session. Ooh. After you run out, after you ran out, you type in another word, repeat until you lose. Interesting. Interesting. Controls. Typing. Alphabets. <laughs> Typing requires English letters A through Z on keyboards. Didn't test if this worked on any other foreign keyboards. Backspace is to delete last character. Enter can be used as an alternative to clicking the button in the UI for keyboard users. Tetris. Spacebar says drop the tetromino to the bottom. Up arrow key to rotate the tetromino. And left, right, down arrow keys to move the pieces. Credit by Zazcoria. Assets Q and A. We can read the Q and A at the end. But yeah, let's uh, let's try this in the web. Wordress. Let's uh, line this up a little bit better. Beautiful. I mean, could full screen. Let's see what it looks like full screen. Oh, that's fine. Wordress. Reg uh, I, um, what? Recommend read this first. Type in an English word to start. To start. Uh, to, to start. It's a parenthesis. Okay, to start. Type in an English word to start six letters or less. Right. Let's type in shadow. Ha ha ha. I, I should not have started with this letter.
Interesting. I, I screwed myself over by choosing my name. Oh, I gotta type in another word. Can I? Oh, it has to be a word. <laughs> it has to be an actual word. Okay. Does it have to be? It has to be six letters? Can it be, um... Um... Little, so we get some skinny letters. <laughs> this would hopefully help us out here, right? Oh, we got a letter. the same word no okay can't use the same word mm. I don't like that <laughs> I'm just trying to get as many letters as I can Hopefully these shapes would help me. Looks like I need a T. I think it fit right there. And an O. Let's get extra S's in there. T. That fits perfectly right there. Oh, we got a double. I could see it and strategize and try to get some some words there. Let's get gravel and see what we can kind of kind of get with that. the word. And that's game. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Let's try that one more time to see if we can get a better word. 
Wait, I didn't even look at the tutorial. I'm silly. Okay, so honestly, this kind of this font is kind of terrible. So let's not use it here. Before each round, you will be asked to enter an English word it consists of six letters or less. The word will then become the tetrominoes for that round. An example below: apple. Oh, I should probably start with that example. Uh, space is to drop. I didn't even use space before. Okay, yeah. So and uppers to rotate. Clearing each line gives you 100 score. All other rules are similar to Tetris. Good luck. Okay, cool. Um, what should we use as the word? Uh, garden. Let's try garden. So we'll do that. We'll do that. Isn't perfect, but look how many look how many stuff we just got set up over there. Uh, flower. Let's do flower. We can drop that here. We can drop that here. We can drop this here. That's a bad idea. Uh oh. Okay, uh, we got a lot, a lot of tiny pockets there, but let's do rovers. Actually, no S. No S. Let's just drop this here. Boom. Oh, was that a triple? That must have been a triple. Nice. messed that one up horribly. I messed that up horribly. That's bad. That's really bad. Let's do bun bunny. Bunnies. Bunny. This is really bad. There's no skinny letters. <laughs> I. It's just. <laughs> it's just one I could just put down. Nice. Uh, you. No. You. Okay. Yes. Mess that one up. Uh, uh, how 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 D. And that's game. Okay, last try. Last try. Let's actually try to do well here. So flowers. That's a good start right there. No, sorry, flower. That's a good start right there. Because we can put this guy in the corner here. And then you can put you down there. And then we can put you here. And then we can put you there. And then we can put you there. And then you can put you here. Boom, look at that. 
at that. That's not too bad. What else? What else? What else? Purple. That's not looking too good, but an F can fit in that spot there. So, hmm. Fing finger. That's got some good shapes in there. Look how perfectly that fits. Same with that one. Not the same with this one. not looking too good. I need a skinny letter. Like a really skinny letter. Let's let's look through all the letters real quick, see what we got. Oh, X is interesting. something to fit in that little thing over there. I'm gonna need like a P. Po. Po is a word. Is it pie? Pie is a word. I need something... <laughs> Pee -pee. Interesting. Hmm. We need. Oh, man. We're not gonna. We're not gonna beat this one. game winner right here. <laughs> oh dang. Yeah, I think uh, someone in the comment just mentioned uh, that the grid isn't fit too well for the blocks. The blocks are all 3x3, three three, but the grid isn't a uh, multiple of three. So yeah, we have... Yeah, if it was like two more spaces to the right, that would be perfect. Because now you have to kind of figure out which letters... And there's nothing that's skinny enough to kind of fit into side spaces either. You really do have to around with it. Oh, 
I like how LOL is a is a valid word for this. I'm guessing LMAO. No? Raffle? No, but row is. Fez. I wrote Les. I wasn't trying to write Les. No. Fez. There we go. was a word, so let's try using that again. Yeah, there's like no way to, for me to squeeze any letters anywhere, just because it's, uh, it's not fit to the grid properly. But it is a very, very interesting concept. Let's just go ahead and, and lose this one real quick. a very interesting concept. I do like the mixture of two games into one, you know, that you're trying to pull off here. But yeah, very well put together game. I like the, the music. It's nice, interesting. I will say that there probably should be like more sound effects in the game. I wonder if numbers work. Probably not. But yeah, let's check out the Q&A. How do I reach out to you? You can leave a comment here on itch or reach out on Discord via their Discord handle there. Is there an ending to this game? I didn't code any, but technically, since there's only a limited amount of words you can use, the maximum possible lines cleared in a single session is... Wow. 127,077 lines with 9 blocks left over, so the score would be... Uh, let's read that number. That's 12,707,700. Note that this is the mathematically upper bound without taking into the shapes of the tetrominoes of each letter into consideration. After that, you'll get stuck at the picking word screen forever, though, since I didn't bother to code that in. Can I play this on a phone? No. I live in your walls. I know. <laughs> but yeah, that is, a like I said, a very interesting concept. Might need some tweaking in the on the board size, I guess you can call it. Um, and maybe add some sound effects and uh, maybe like a leaderboard of some kind as well. But you definitely have something going here for sure. This is a very interesting concept. Well done. But yeah, that was Wordress by Zaskoria. One second, just checking something. All right, next up we have Zombies of Doom, created by Godless Epic. Zod, for short it seems. Made in Unity, found the jam page. And I like every time we're opening up a new screen, you see the ratings just go up every time too, so that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's check this one out. This is a download game. Before we do that, let's check out the game page. It's the Game Jam, Interstellar Game Jam, Doom-inspired two days. 
Even though the jam was five days, some people made the games in less time. Uh, previous use resolution of I I won't probably won't be able to. <laughs> I'll try. This was made during one week ish for the Interstellar Game Jam. Had a lot of things happen, so I ended up making the game in two or three days. That's why it's short. I had a slightly bigger vision for this one. There was a few bugs that, nonetheless, I'm proud of this submission. Hey, the fact that you've submitted something that is definitely something to be proud of. It's slightly inspired by Doom with the theme of retro. My only way of doing this was with my own pixel drawn sprites not an artist please let me know feedback if you like to co talk code or interested in communicating left the comments open nice uh but yeah let's check this one out zod zombies of doom is this one gonna yell at me again my computer is just gonna be mean Right into it. Alright, cool. Well, it just says of doom because uh, my resolution is not the proper one. There might be a way to kind of change that, but I'm not too familiar with it at the moment. Whoops. But yeah, um, info. Let me see that. Might be missing something on the bottom. You're the last surviving officer of your squad. Thankfully, you're a badass. <laughs> Mouse click to shoot. Shift to run. Click. Shift to dash when available. Will do. I locked myself off the game. Well, we gotta start it up again. Alright, let's play. So looking up doesn't look up, so we're just shooting straight ahead. Alright. Oh, oh, they're fast, they're fast. and they're fast. Or are they not going through walls? I could just see them through the walls. I might be able to see them through the walls, okay. meter at the top, that's good to know. Oh, here's the next area of enemies. And it's interesting too, uh, the clipping issues uh, persist here where... Oh, 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 Game oh. over. Oh, I like the voice line. Let's try that again. So there's no reticle, so I can't see where I'm aiming. It says health on the top left, I don't see what my health is. This is where I died last time. 
see. No, that's it. Oh, I survived. Thank you for playing the first game age with a short time frame. Enjoyed competing in the jam. You're welcome. That was it. That was fast. Well, that was Zombies of Doom. Um, couple critiques is one, the fact that you can see enemies through the walls. That's something for sure you want to check out. Um, so that way you can't see through the walls. Uh, the enemies may, or the, I feel like the enemies should billboard a bit better. So that way they're always facing you. Um, I didn't see how much health I had because that, that might have been a screen clip issue though. Um, so that might have been more on my end. Um, there was no reticle, so it made it harder to find out where I was shooting, but, uh, what's it called? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was made in a short amount of time, and like I said, there was there's some content in there that for sure could have been added in. I, lo I do like the, the voice line when you fail. That was interesting. I like adding voices to games. That's always nice. But yeah, it was, uh, it could have been a little bit trickier. I know I died once or twice, or I guess once there. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention to too much, but adding a more difficult area right there at the end would have been top notch. It was a nice way to kind of close off the game there. Um, and you can definitely kind of keep going with this and add more levels as the game continues. Uh, you know, that could have been just like one level there. Um, adding objectives in the level could help flesh out a bit more as well. Um, and again, like verticality, having, uh, being able to aim up and down and also being able to traverse going upstairs or downstairs and jumping off of something, landing somewhere below you, things like that to kind of like get the enemies to move around a bit differently. But I know that kind of also comes with this, uh, his own like technical hurdles in terms of like AI pathing and stuff like that. So, you know, a grain of salt in that regard, but you know, some things to explore if you want to keep uh, improving upon this idea. But yeah, that was Zombies of Doom by Godless Epic. Next up we have Parachute Guy by B. Nick. It's another download game made in Unity. Heard from us in Post Jam Productions. Alright, these are the assets that were used. The rest is done by hand. Cool. Not too much on the page there, so we just check the zip. We've already unzipped it, and that one is Parachute Guy. Okay. And my computer's gonna yell at me. There we go. And here I am installing all these viruses so that y'all don't have to. You're welcome. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. We're under attack. Just, uh, just run the game. Just run the game, and I'll be happy. Explode my computer later. Let's just play the game now.
think the song is looping, I can't tell. No, that sounds like the ending there. Yeah, so it says uh, enter quarters, so if you can't, just press P. And I don't have any quarters, so it looks like we're gonna have to press P. You only need the arrow keys. Watch out for pointy objects and hooks. Collect coins for points. Then press P, okay. P. Oh. That's us. That's this parachute guy. I like that, that little sound effect of the blowing. Oh, collect the coin. There we go. Ah. Did I take damage? I think I did. Are these voice lines all recorded by the person who made the game? Ah. Oh, I took damage there. I was in, I was in the hit zone. It sounds like you're tapping something on a glass, like you're you're hitting a glass cup with like a fork or something to get the coin sound effects. Ah. <laughs> I like the the pain sound effect too. Ah. Ah. Whoa, whoa! There are the hooks. Whoa. Where's parachute guy going? It doesn't look like it doesn't look like anywhere I would want to go. These buildings. I seriously do enjoy the the rudimentary uh, the sound effects. He's using your microphone and just doing stuff with it. That's just great. That's a that's a whole art in its own right there. It's called folly. Oh. Oh, we reached the second biome here. Is this water? Ice? into them. How many songs does this game have? Also, are these the aliens?
one hit away from losing this run. The music changed again. Start that one. We'll do a one more, one more playthrough, and then hopefully it doesn't yell at me again. Nope, we're right in there. Parachute guy, take two. Your new score now. Danger zone. Uh oh, let's not go to the danger zone. The uh, the hitboxes in this are a little uh, a little too big. Like right there, that hit me, and I it, I technically did not touch that. there I shouldn't have hit anything there I think there's a lot of uh, box colliders or square colliders going on oh that tears my parachute it makes me go faster interesting That wasn't supposed to hit me there. an interesting mechanic. I do like that. Ah. Yeah, that's Parachute Guy. Um, <laughs> one thing I would say, uh, I, I didn't know until my second playthrough, but hitting spiky things rips up your parachute. I think that was actually a really nice touch. I thought it was just hitting things, you take damage and that was it. But that added a whole extra layer to the gameplay and I do appreciate that. One gripe that I have with the game are the hitboxes are too big. Um, I think that's because they're all squares, both for the player and for the props, or the, the enemies rather, the hazards. And also either on the hazards, 
on the player or both, they might be a little too large. So every time that you just graze by something, you think you're safe, you still take damage anyways. I feel like hit, fixing those hitboxes will go a long way into making the game uh, a bit more fair. Um, having different things that you can pick up besides the coins are like health that you can pick up would be great. Um, and also, um, now that I saw that you can rip up your parachute, I think another cool thing that you can grab is a is an extra parachute. So that way you don't have to just keep free falling down. You can get another shot to go slow again. Um, I was kind of hoping that when I pressed down on the on the directional keys, that I'd be able to go down faster um, on my own at at my own kind of pace. Um, but seeing that that having it so when you take damage from spiky things it tears up your parachute i think that was interesting as well um but yeah having some way to kind of fix that parachute down the line too if you don't want to play like that and you accidentally hit something spiky you can fix it um but yeah that was just some of my thoughts on there i do like the the vo voice recorded lines for the game for the taking damage for blowing into your parachute for the coin pickups like I, I can hear the microphone work at play here and that was that was really interesting so well done again that was parachute guy by b nick and we have one, two, three, four, five games left to play, and I would want to try to wrap this up soonish. When did we start? Like eight thirty? So yeah, uh, it would be like about a four-hour stream, roughly, maybe four and a half hours. So yeah, let's try to just speed through these last couple games. There's one up ahead that I have heard a lot of good things about. Um, but yeah, there's. A few more to get to before we can hit that. Hello, Teapot. Up next, we have Retro Reboot Bounce. Created by Graphics. Explore retro computers in this retro-themed arcade game made for the fifth Interstellar Game Jam. And I think this is something you can play on browser, so let's check it out. To earn points, bounce the ball against the bottom of the screen using your mouse. You can collect bonus points by hitting the ball at the bonuses. Also, please be careful with the ball. If you slam it too hard, it will get stuck. Good to know. Let's check it out. Can we go full screen? I don't think we can. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. doing is this the game or is this a tutorial okay let's see what do we have here how do i play sides so apple 2 dos version 3.3 .3 system master january 1st 1983 copyright apple computer incorporated 1980 1982 to earn points hit the ball against the ground with your mouse to earn points
Dang it. Dang it. I play with my mouse sensitivity a little too hard. No. I think it's like when you hit the walls, it even makes you fail, which is kind of a little messed up. So earn points at the oh. Dang it. <laughs> says, please be careful with the ball. If you slam it too hard, it will get stuck. I haven't gotten it stuck yet, so I think that's the win condition here. So let's try to get infinity points. Take it slow. Because then it just starts going crazy if it just slips out. It's a level three. We did it.
We did it. We we won. We we beat the game, everybody. We beat the game. We've won. Let's get to level 10. <laughs> did it. Fuck. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you beat the game. <laughs> High score of 1,923. I think that's, I think that's enough for that game. That was interesting. It was really, really, really hard to control, uh, and breaking the game is the way to do it. That's how you win. <laughs> but yeah, that's really cool how you're using a really old, like, backgrounds and stuff like that for the game. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, for the game and using, like, old school, like, you know, Windows 98 kind of backgrounds. That's pretty fucking cool. Well done. All right, yeah. So that was retro reboot B. Uh, <laughs> wow, retro reboot bounce, where you bounce a little ball around up and down the little screen, which is pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, in terms of any improvements, I'd say is maybe not have it so like the left and right side of the screen penalize you as well, because um, you have three barriers where you're trying to stop it hitting. And just trying to hit one barrier, which I kind of get is kind of like a goal. You're trying to hit the goal. But I feel like hitting the left and right side of the screen should not penalize you so badly in terms of just resetting you entirely. If anything, maybe those left and right sides should just do nothing. And then have the top side is what penalizes you. So that way you can kind of still bounce it left and right. But you have to kind of still position it to get to the bottom to get your point and then prevent it from hitting the top of the screen. Because if you want to hit the bottom, the opposite is not wanting to hit the top. You know, like that's the goal of the game. But having the left and right hand side penalize you as well means that you can't rely on it whatsoever. So getting those high scores, it's a bit tricky. Having those little bonus orbs floating around is helpful. Uh, but, you know, if you try to go for it, you're hitting the walls anyway. And then it's just like, it's just not worth it. It's, it's just a matter of getting lucky and hitting it. But yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say right now for that game. It was pretty straightforward. It would be interesting if there was an online leaderboard just to see <laughs> just to see who broke the game the worst <laughs> or the most. That'd be interesting. But yeah, I think that was a pretty straightforward game. I'm glad that it was playable on uh, WebGL, so that way you can get more people to try it out. Although I would recommend putting some more screenshots and a thumbnail for your game so people can get an idea of what it is ahead of time before jumping in. But yeah, again, Retro Reboot Bounce by Draphics. Next up we have Space Sandbox. Again, we're getting close to the end here. We only got four more games to play before the stream is up, so I'll try to wrap this up in like the next hour or so. <clears throat> Made for the Interstellar Game Jam 2023. There's multiple uh, Interstellar Game Jams in 2023. This is the second one this year, and I do plan on having a third one uh, this fall. So, uh, yeah. This, this is not the only Interstellar Game Jam this year, but it is one of them. Created by Daniel Games. Made using Unity, it's on the Jam page. Nice. Check out the game page before we check out the zip and unzip and zoop sop. Space Sandbox is a captivating 2D retro style game that combines the sandbox concept of bad piggies with the space simulation elements of Kerbal Space Program. This game provides you with a creative um, 
Uh, this, uh... Yeah, combines the sand with bad pizza and purple space program, provides you with a creative and adventurous experience. Nice. Um, give me one second before we start this up. Just wanna... I like how that's there on the side. <laughs> Just give me one second before we start this up. All right, sorry about that. I do have something right in the background. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. All right. And this one is Space Sandbox. Is it going to give me error messages and tell me that I cannot play? Yes, it is. But we'll just keep telling him that it's okay until it's time that it pops up. Go away, go away. Please go away. to pop up anytime soon it should there we go welcome to space sandbox go to vab oh what's a vab and settings all right so settings audio Turn it up a little bit, sure. Let's get music up. It says, every asset is made by me, except for the font made by Tiny Worlds, controls, mouse central, and inspect mode. To return to build view, Q, E, what? Hold on a second, did I check? I didn't check their jam page, did I? I did. Okay. Doesn't say too much on what to do here. Okay. for the thruster. Okay, I guess we're going to have to check it out. So Q E W T what? This is a pre-alpha for the game jam. Yes. Clear saves. Oops, I broke the music.
Alright, let's try out the game. Go to Vab. Here we go. 12 levels? What? Alright. What are we... Where are we? Who are we? We're this. Inspect. What? Okay. Don't inspect. What do we have? Thrusters? What is this? What is... Are we building a ship right now? Are these guns? One star. Wait, why did I go back in there? What is this block? Is this just like the middle part of it? What is this then? Try level two. Inspect. What does a star do? Just to kind of tell me where to go? Where's the goal? Where's the goal? too sure what it is I'm doing so it's kind of tricky to I and mean, I tried reading the controls it just wasn't really straightforward
these are, but we're just going to add them. thrusters we can fit on here. More, thr more thrust. And I don't know how to rotate these either, so it's just like I put one up front and I put one on the back and hope that works. Got a star. It's weird how this is projecting me in the way I don't want to go. Oh. that I don't really comprehend the rules of the game here, unfortunately. And read this again. So it says, controls mouse central and expect mode to return to build view. Q and E for the RCS. T for the change RCS mode. WASD for moving. W for the thruster. Okay, so let's try that one more time. We'll do, do number three here. We'll keep it simple as well. stands for monoprop. Interesting. Well, I think I'm gonna leave that one at that. Um, 
it's a little tricky to kind of figure out what things do. Just because like the, the the controls are explained a little odd. Um, and the items in the game aren't really given a proper description. I have to kind of figure it out by messing around. But I mean, I guess that's the point of a sandbox game. And you can definitely see the Kerbal Space Program elements shining in this game with the creative, uh, you know, being able to customize your ship however you want to. That's really neat. Um, one issue I had was, you know, getting lost. I didn't know where I had to go for the missions, which made it so it's like, I'm building these ships, yeah, and I know there's a inspect mode, but while you're flying and everything, it is hard to kind of figure out where you have to go next because the background just looks the same. It is amazing that you're able to kind of create your own spaceship however you want to. You can mess around with ideas until you get something that just works and then just kind of take it with you mission to mission. But yeah, it's just kind of hard to gauge what, as a player, we should do. Um, and it is nice that there are a lot of missions on there. I should have checked out a few more of them. It's just I had a lot of difficulty just you know, knowing what it was that I was doing. I wanted to try to rotate some pieces around and I don't know if that was an option. Um, I just wasn't able to figure that one out. Uh, it said T did something. I just, I pressed it a couple times and nothing happened. I might've just been doing it wrong. Um, but yeah, I do like building things. I like, you know, it, it did scratch that itch in terms of, um, you know, that, that creative itch that I always have when making games. I always enjoy building my own custom things in games, which is really nice. So like, you know. Yeah, like maybe like, yeah, someone mentioned too, like a, having an arrow point towards a goal. But yeah, um... That was Space Sandbox, and it does lift up to the lane where you can just straight up create whatever spaceship you want to, and that's really dope. So yeah, well done. Uh, like I said, it could have had more uh, explanation as to you know how things worked in terms of customization, but aside from that, like it was interesting. I like being able to build stuff. So yeah, well done. Next up we have One Boot Ahead, which currently has been rated by 24 people, which is, I think, let's check, we'll have to do a refresh here, um, yeah, this is currently the most rated game in the jam right now, and some of the other ones too we played were up there in the top five, um, yeah, this one is currently the number one most rated game, unfortunately that does not mean it is the best game of the jam it's just the most popular game of the jam it could also very well you know who knows i haven't played all the games yet but this one could be the best one there who knows i sure as heck don't but this is one boot ahead created by kept fox a retro gimmicks based physics platformer made using unity found on itch.io let's check the game page real quick and it runs on on webgl so that's perfect <clears throat> yeah julian a severed head in a boot only wants one thing in his life making his mama proud <laughs> what better way to do that than to create his own rocket propelled boot and fly straight to the moon what he finds on the moon however is not what he expected and before he knows it he embarks on an amazing side quest Guide Julian through a 2D physics-based side-scrolling adventure using absolutely nothing but his boot. Made us a submission to the Interstellar Jam 5 in the span of 3.5 days. I like seeing how some of these games were made in significantly less time than uh, a lot of other games. Like, this is a five-day game jam, but there's already been a couple that we played that have been made in just a handful of days. Like, not, not using the entire five days. So it's very interesting. Um, controls to rotate use arrow keys or A and D or the left joystick or D-pad. I like how there's controller support. 
And to propel Julian, use space bar or a south button on the gamepad. Every aspect of the game is made by me. Game design, level design, audio design, sound effects, and soundtrack programming, everything. Wow. A single one of the soundtracks has been reiterated and reused from a previous project. Besides that, it's all original for this game. All audio has been created in an authentic tracker, and all graphics use no more than three colors. All assets could potentially be ported directly to old school Nintendo systems. Wow. Interesting. And then the cover was made by uh, Stoff Creates. Yeah, just a, a severed head inside of a boot. I thought there was a whole body in there. <laughs> and it was just the head. But yeah, let's check it out. One boot ahead. I would guess that makes sense with the title. I see what you did there. I missed the intro. Oh, you had to work on the weekend. Yeah, that makes sense. It was weird because a lot of people usually have the weekends off, but I'm glad that the jam kind of overlapped in a way where you were still able to participate because otherwise we wouldn't get this game. So let's press start. The game supports keyboard and gamepad input. So yeah, like, uh, let's just go over one more time. A and D. Or the arrow keys and space bar. Okay. Press start. Is that enter? Is that space? It's space. Uh, let's check the options first. Actually, let's... Let's just appreciate this music real quick. I think it's looping. <laughs> yeah, I like this song. It's a nice little soundtrack. Let's check out the options real quick. I have to press space bar. Yeah, let's crank that up a little bit. Right, let's jump on in. adventure. Gertrude, Julian, how? Why? You're just a severed head. Do you even have a plan? <laughs> but mama, I've got my boot. But that boot ain't made for walking. I, I see what you did there. That is, that is a clever pun. That is a good one. <laughs> that's why I installed a rocket launcher, mama. And where do you think that's gonna bring you? To the moon, mama. To the moon. As if, son. You're just going to fail miserably, like you do at everything else in life. That is... That is a mean mom. Mama, this is exactly why I'm going to the moon. I'm going to prove myself. Goodbye, mama.
change when you get close to the goal. That's a first. You see, sometimes life on Earth gets really overwhelming and I just need a little space. <laughs> that's, uh, let's see what you did there. Alright, I see. But going to the moon. I don't think that's what they mean when people use that expression. Well, regardless of what they mean, it works for me. At least it used to until these forsaken drones arrived. Are these aliens? Way worse, kiddo. These are governmental drones trained to rep replace pigeons in the future. Oh no. That's terrible. How do we stop this madness? There's only a single option. A single option? I doubt that's just a single option. That just sounds like just another generic plot device to me. We need to blow up the moon. <laughs> Yeah, alright, that does make sense. Well, I'm here to prove myself to my mother, but blowing up the moon sounds like a fun side quest. <laughs> totally, dude. Yeah, people might not get it right away, but these two things, damn right, they go hand in hand. It's true. Well, thanks, Mr. Giraffe. I'll go and blow up the moon, then. Just, just casually just go blow up the moon. Save the giraffe. I want to go say hi to the giraffe. That's a that's a clever way to introduce that mechanic.
crisscrossing the first time. during this production night. Uh oh, this is gonna get tricky. You, Mr. Giraffe, you're back. Sure am, kid. Feel free to call me Buck. Buck, that's such a cool and very respectable name. Matches the sunglasses. Oh, wow, it really does. I do have to say, your snout looks like a really weird smiley face. <laughs> it does. I like how self-aware you are. <laughs> that, little, that little bit on his face looks like two eyes and a smirk. <laughs> Listen, you're literally a severed head in a boot. I don't think you should be the one to judge. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. It's not nice to judge people by the looks, and same goes for video games, right? Dang right. Anyway, you're getting close to the moon's core. Traveling will get you will get a lot harder here. I've set up some portals to help you out. Whoa, sunglasses, portals. You're the coolest giraffe I ever met. Thanks, kid. Now on your way. See you, Buck. Well, 
portals. Mama, what are you doing here? Why are you on the moon? I'm here to protect you, son. But Mama, I'm already 12 days old. I don't, I don't need your protection. How many times have you died this journey? Oh, good question. I don't know, like a dozen? That doesn't matter. I did struggle, yes, but I always got back on my feet. You don't have feet. You have maybe you foot and managed to keep going. But all the hurt could have been avoided if you just stayed with me. No, Mama, it was time for me to chase my own dreams. I don't need your protection anymore. All right then, son, if you think you're all so capable, I prepared a couple arenas for you to prove yourself. You've prepared arenas on the moon? No time for questions, go now.
final level vibes. one of the
has to be the last level. Gimmicks, more levels, you got with it away with it easy. But aren't you the slightest bit proud? Mama. No. You have no heart, Mama. You have no heart. Sup, kid? I went all the way to the moon. I beat Mama's challenges, and she just doesn't care. You know, kiddo, I know it's rough trying to gain acknowledgement from the ones you look up to, but the real acknowledgement begins within oneself. Your mother's lack for respect from you, it doesn't take away everything you've done. It doesn't take away you making it all the way to the moon. It doesn't take away all the challenges you overcome within your life. Wait, are you saying I shouldn't try to live up to the expectations of others? That's right, kid. It's your life and you do what you like. It doesn't matter what others think as long as you believe in yourself. As long as you are happy, you'll always be one boot ahead. Oh my gosh, that's the name of the game right there. Oh wow, that's some really wise advice from a giraffe. Anyway, what is that over there? That's the heart of the moon, your final destination for this adventure. It looks just like a cartoonified human heart, huh? Why does the moon have a human heart? It's because it's your mom's. You're about to kill your mom. <laughs> this is where it all comes full circle. Wait, you're just saying that, right? That doesn't make sense. No, it's actually true. The developer added that as a really bad plot device in an attempt to create some drama. But due to an approaching deadline and decline inspiration, there was no emotional music to go along, so we're just going to stick with this line that'll never be relevant again. Now go, kiddo. Shut down this hidden drone creation base. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs>
Did it, kid? Oh, I accidentally skipped the game. Whoops, I, bro <laughs> I broke the game. My bad. You did it, kid. Heck yeah, I did. We shut down the government spying program. No more pigeon drones for them. I'm so proud of myself. As you should be, kiddo. And I'm proud of you too, player. Oh, that's me. No matter how hard things got, no matter how challenging things became, you didn't give up. You kept going. I'm just a fictional severed head, a figment of someone's imagination, but boy, am I proud of you. So, uh, what's next for you? Honestly, I'm tired. Turns out traveling to the moon in a boot is very exhausting. I'm just going to go home and I'll see what's up next. It sounds like a plan I. We'll meet again. You as well, player. Boot ahead. These are your stats for this playthrough. Loading time nor dialogue is not included. 18 deaths, 24 minutes, 14 seconds. Thank you for playing. I hope you had a good time. Press start to go to the main menu. Your safe hall will be reset. Interesting. That was fun. That was interesting. One really neat thing that I liked about the game, and I, I think it was intentional, but it was like a double play on the theme. Of it being retro there is yes that retro aspect of it is, is very very reminiscent of like NES type style games um, or even SNES uh, but what's really cool is that you also made it so that way you had to shoot the boot rocket to kind of retroactively you know like like a retro rocket you're, you're pushing yourself propelling yourself in one direction but you're turning the boot around to shoot in that direction again or a different direction to slow yourself down. And that is really clever. Well done. In terms of uh, any thing I can give you in terms of pointers, one is just to flesh out the story a bit more. <laughs> it was it was a really good story, but you can tell that you know you had uh, time constraints and you got very meta with it with the talking about the game jam and stuff. I think that was pretty. That was a nice twist. That was a nice touch. I, I mean. Um, the edges of the map, I will say, like, once you get towards, like, the edge edge of the map, um, the walls aren't there anymore. It's just the edge of the screen. Um, so, like, if I was, like, kind of moving in certain areas, I did kind of ignore it, but it is a potential for you to kind of put secrets there. If, uh, if a player sees, like, a small little gap that looks like it's just touching the screen, it sh maybe should allow them to go through that gap. Um, otherwise, you know, put uh, putting up walls on the edge of the screen could help out a lot, too. But other than that, this game has been really well made, really well put together. The soundtracks and the sound effects in this was, you know, it was really nice. There's a lot of, a lot of love and care went into this game, you can tell. 
but I will say though to uh, necessarily be careful. Uh, but in terms of like just any any game jams that have a rating system, uh, having more ratings doesn't necessarily mean you'll get a higher rating. It just means that your game is getting a whole lot of attention, which in itself is it's great. But you have to, in terms of like placements and stuff, you have to be skeptical. Um, and like I said, I haven't played through all of the games in the game jam yet, so I don't know if there's anything, you know, that, that will like really, really blow me away. Um, but it could very well be another game that's out there that only has like a handful of ratings that is, you know, like phenomenally well put together, just not advertised properly. Um, but, you know, in, in the event that pops up, we can talk about that then. For now, though, this game is, you know, is very, very cute. I like the, the severed head storyline and your mom being the moon and also, I guess, responsible for the, the government drones. And the and the one hero in the story, you know, the, the severed head in the boot, what was his name? Julian. And then meeting and in, bumping into the, the giraffe on <laughs> the moon. That was nice as well. <laughs> but yeah, again, this game has been very well put together. I can't see what else. I, I, I can't wait to see what else you kind of come up with in the future. This is really neat. Especially if you didn't even utilize the entire five days. I know you said you were busy, but like, imagine if you had that extra time too. This could have been even better you know and it's already really good you know but yeah well done seriously well done again this was one boot ahead pun intended by kep fox all right we have two games left and then we're all done yep two games and then we're all set um yeah, and you can see how like again like the ratings are just jumping up even though like I'm not rating anything there's still people out there it's still pretty early in the rating period that there's a lot of entries uh, still getting rated so next up we have retro by star plays POC get out of here let's check out the game page real quick before we check out that uh you know exe Retro, have you ever wanted to find yourself have you ever wanted to find yourself in a world where everything is captured by retro? No? Then this is a game for you. Plot, you spilled a drink on your computer and the unexpected began, the world began to turn retro. One is pistol, two is gun, and three is saws. Okay. Interesting. So one, two, and three. There's no more controls than that. Alright, let's Check it out. Also, in order to kind of preserve audio quality, I've closed all my windows and shut down the fan. So it is, it has been getting pretty warm in here. So I do want to try to wrap up as quickly as possible. But yeah, two more games left. I think we can wrap up in the next 30 minutes, which would make this like a five hour live stream, which is fine. Uh, I was just aiming more for four, but some of these games, you know, you just have to play them. You just have to play through. But yeah, next up we have is just Retro, which should be this one here. Mm, there you go. And my computer is probably going to be upset. Yeah, if this is popping up, it will. No, never mind. Straight to it. Made in G Develop. Interesting. Interesting intro. Oh, that was that was pretty cool. Oh. 
to obey Anton and go to sewer. go to house really Boss, 
supposed to happen here? Waiting 107 seconds. here for 107 seconds. Interesting. That was odd. I do like this. The fact that the main menu leads right into the game. Like when you press play, he walks out the elevator and it's, it's game time. Like that's pretty cool. going the other way. This, I think this game uses a little bit too much copyrighted material. I might have to disqualify this game. I'll do it. I'll do it another time. I mean, I already played through it, uh, so I guess I would still give my opinions. Uh, yeah, the the music. I feel like it it should have been a bit more yours. <laughs> The controls could be a little bit more 
outlined somewhere in terms of what it is you can do and how to do it. Uh, yeah. 2D platformer, the bullets didn't feel like they were doing too, too much. Uh, There's no impact, there's no sound effects and stuff, like gunshots or impact. Taking damage, again, uh, can be really helpful so I can know when I'm getting hit. But, yeah, I think I'm gonna just kind of leave that one as is, just cause like I said, there's, uh, it seems like there's Mario music and Better Call Saul music in this game. And I don't think that's entirely allowed. I'm pretty sure Nintendo would, would come after you for that. And then you also have Saul Goodman coming after you too, and you know, he's a criminal lawyer. You get a lot in trouble with that guy. But yeah, that was Retro by Star Plays. And last but not least, we have Mooncite. It will kind of make like, what, a five hour live stream? I'm gonna leave it as is so I can turn the fans back on. Uh, Mooncite by Deep Delta Play. To clear a space tram's way to freedom by driving fragile observation kite. By driving a fragile observation kite. Okay. Made in Unity. Let's check it out. Oh, it runs on. Hell yeah. Drive a utility kite, avoiding obstacles and clearing the way for a tram full of workers as you seek escape from an invaded outpost. By the way, Press spacebar or right click to advance during tech tutorials. Made in five days for 2023's Interstellar Game Jam 5. Yes, this is one of the 2023 Interstellar Game Jams. But let's just run it and gun it. Let's see, maybe we can do a full screen. Sort of. about the same size, right? You can see more, actually. It would play like that. Oh! There's Castellano. We'll leave the tutorial on for now. Pilot, I'm Sescla. Captain of the Ice Fire Freighter. Sorry, the eyes look like L's. And the L's look the same exact uh, of the ice freighter fortunate whim so you're not a pilot how did you get into that device kite then never mind the bombers are almost there you'll have to learn your kite is Ooh, sorry this is the late night stream so I'm a little bit tired <clears throat> But yeah, your kite is connected to a tram with the land crew. The tram and you need to achieve escape velocity. To do that, you'll need to clear some obstacles in the way of the tram. Move the controls around. The cockpit will turn and the kite will stay in the same place. To move sideways, the kite itself uses pedals. Try it left and right. As you can see, you are bound to the tram so you can move in a semi-circular motion. I can use the double ASD. You can also move towards and away from the tram by pressing the buttons up and down. It would be pointless if you can use the grip beam. If you couldn't use the grip beam, use it by pressing the left trigger. Oh yeah. in front of you, you can take explosive, pick it up in the grip boom, and hurt it, hurl it to the control tower to open the door. Oh, fuck. I fucked that up, didn't I? You will see the regular escape velocity in your controls once you start moving. Don't let the tram slow you down too much. One last thing, remember not to poke out of the launch alley for long, or the gunships will rip you. Try not to crash, pilot. Your life is not the only one at stake. Yep. I don't have 
to move out of the way. Fail, making me fail. I'm missing something, that's for sure. Alright. <laughs> Give it a one more try. I think I need to move the orange ones out the way. It makes sense that the orange ones are blocking the path. What hit? Understand this entirely. It's like, why is it warning? Why is it saying warning? Is the question. Saying warning again, is it because I'm flying too high or something? Stay within range. I don't get it. I want to try it in Castellano real quick and see if I can butcher the tutorial. Con tutorial. Empezar. Piloto, soy Sescla, capitana de la nave de Criba, capricho afortunado. Como que no sabes pilot pilotir? 
cómo te metiste en ese y berrierte de servicio entonces no importa los bombaderos ya casi están ahí vas a tener que aprender the thing is too is like there's I's and L's and they look exactly the same so it's not really helping all too much Yeah, the I's and the L's look identical, so even speaking it in another language is hard for me. But yeah. I think we'll leave that one as is. And we'll kind of just leave that game where that one's at. It's just too tricky. Yeah, someone was saying uh, there were yeah there were a lot of composers that were looking for teams. However, not everyone on the Discord was uh, participating in the game jam. There were people that were in the jam that were not in the Discord, or other people that just simply weren't looking for other teammates. Even though they probably could have made use of them, uh, they just did it on their own. Maybe they weren't aware that there was people forming teams and stuff. They just kind of joined the server and just kept paying attention to the announcements and that was it but yeah there was uh some good sound effects in that one it was just really tricky to figure out what the premise of the game was i knew i was under attack but like flying above these obstacles is easier than flying underneath them because that puts you in harm's way of the next obstacle just smack you in the face like when the door is open after i blew up the second door uh there's an obstacle right fucking there and it makes it really tricky for maneuvering around um because you, can, you can't really expect the next obstacle and there's a door right there i mean i guess these are like different levels so it makes sense to make it a little bit di more difficult as it progresses but it was uh yeah it was tricky in the way that i didn't know why i was failing if i knew why i was failing i'd be able to avoid it a bit better i, f I figured it was because i was getting too far away from the from the tram however i don't know there, there should be something that kind of flies above instead of just like a warning that pops up on the screen because then i don't know you know like for me it's like that's the play space like i shouldn't be penalized for exploring the play space uh while trying to move around all these objectives in front of the tram if anything i feel like the play space should then just be limited to what you want them to play in um or have there be an imminent threat that that kind of hones in and you can kind of see like a meter filling up and then when it does fill up then you hit the fail but if it's just a warning that pops up on screen i don't know how close i am to triggering that end condition you know i know that the tram has health so you have to move the orange blocks in order for it to maintain its health i did see that percentage on the top of the screen but even then that's also not too too clear i mean the, the tutorial does tell you to protect the tram but I don't know, there, there could be a bit more in terms of uh, visual cues and, you know, like more purpose in terms of the gameplay and everything. However, I will say like the, the moon kite model is pretty well put together. The sound effects, the UI looks really good. I do enjoy that there is a bit of a story in there. I wonder if as the game progresses that would have been a bit more fleshed out like maybe the person comes back and like hey like oh by the way you know here's level two now we have different obstacles that'd be a good way to introduce uh, different obstacles if you got to that point i mean it's just tricky for me to kind of figure it out i can't get to the second level but yeah the ambient noises in the in the game were really well put together the sound effects again were really you know a nice added touch as well it's just the, the, you know, communicating to the player what's going on a bit better through through the gameplay. But yeah, I like that little gravity gun. That's pretty cool. I wish it was a bit more utilized besides just blowing open the tower to open the door. It would be cool if you can use it to destroy debris. And like, you know, besides, I mean, the doors are technically debris. It is blocking the tram and you. Uh... 
but having it so you can just pick it up and start uh, blowing away certain obstacles ahead of you so that way you would allow yourself to maneuver a bit easier um you know kind of like a like a bit of a risk reward i guess kind of thing where you know there's certain crates in tight locations off of the tramway so the tram is not going to attack it and by picking it up and throwing it will allow you to potentially hurt the tram if you hit it too close to it or blow up the debris or a bit of both Yeah, there was a few people that weren't looking at the team finder channels um, or the or the find the team uh, forums. It, it was it was new. The find the team forums were new for this jam. Um, since the jam is already getting close to concluding and the, you know the submission periods have closed, I was thinking of clearing out that uh, forum and just kind of keeping it open for other jams or projects that people are looking for teams for. So I can see like, hey, this is the project that I'm working on, you know, like if anyone wants to join in and help, feel free. Um, but yeah, that was Moon Kite by Deep Delta Play. I'm pretty sure I checked out the, yeah, it will be playing it on there. And yeah, like, like I was saying too, like a lot of these uh, WebGL games, you can see that they've been getting a decent amount of ratings compared to games without it. So going forward in terms of anybody who's submitting games to Jams, while there is a trade-off where more people would play your game if you had a WebGL build, um, well, one trade-off is that, you know, more people doesn't necessarily mean better ratings, and two, the WebGL builds are more timely to build versus just to download, and also, too, there are times where it can, it can perform a little bit worse than the download build. So just something to keep in mind. And I, I just remember too, somebody told me to play the game on a download build versus the WebGL build. And yeah. But yeah, WebGLs is really good for getting people to play your game, especially for game jams, as it's all about, you know, getting it to as many eyes as possible and getting as much feedback from people as possible. WebGLs are just really good for that. Um, but it, it can be tricky and especially if you're cutting it close for the like the deadline, it uh, takes significantly longer to build than uh, than just to download. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> But yeah, that was 15 games for the Interstellar Game Jam. We can check real quick in submission order real quick what we played. We've went through Player 2 is Disconnected, Analog Pong, Mech Hunt, Pixelated Peril, Solar Strike, Robotron 2024, Retro Drive, Wordress, Zombies of Doom, Parachute Guy, Retro Reboot Bound, Space Sandbox, One Boot Ahead, Retro, and Moon Kite. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing like 15 games each time, uh, so the next ones will be like this, the rest of this row, the rest of this row, that's what, 13 games, 14, 15, so from Evaluated, which I've seen some, some GIFs and screenshots for in, uh, on the Discord, all the way to Retro Runner. So that's what we'll be playing next time, Reluctant Pac-Man as well, that was one game that I saw that seemed really interesting. I didn't really see any gameplay for it, just that screenshot is dope. You know, like, you're playing as Pac-Man, but does, he doesn't want to play Pac-Man. I think it's a nice twist. But yeah, those were the first 15 games. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the live stream. I have it posted on the Discord. Um, for But for me, local time is going to be at around 2 p.m. Eastern is when we do the second batch of games. <clears throat> but yeah, that was about it for this first live stream. It went on a little bit longer than I would have wanted it to. Uh, so I'll try to make the next couple ones a bit more speedier. But I guess it's you know nice to have uh, more time to play the games and get more feedback out there. Um, 
yeah, before we wrap up real quick, I do want to thank again everyone who participated in the Game Jam, everybody who came to watch the stream. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get notified when there's more streams coming up throughout the week. Uh, you know, put the bell on there too because I don't really upload too often, so that helps whenever I do to, you know, get it up there on your front page. Um, yeah, and like the video as well so that way more people can check out these videos going forward and check out, you know, in turn all the games that were played. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, special thanks to all the people that helped kind of put this jam together. Uh, design Buddies, again, the community of designers that have, um, you know, resources out there for people that are looking for jobs or trying to grow in any kind of like design or art field. Uh, they even have like, you know, like uh, different challenges on there as well, like uh, hackathons and stuff that they do. Um, you know, check out the Discord in the description for more details on those things. Post Jam Productions for hosting the... Um, I keep forgetting the, the way it's called. Sorry. Uh, thank you. I want to thank Post Jam Productions for hosting the review swaps. There you go. Um, over in their Discord server. And they do this for other game jams as well. So you can go over there and kind of get a you know a good idea of what other popular jams are going coming up. And you'll be able to find other people that are jammers and can potentially partner up with them for future jams too. Um, and, and that's also another good community for showing off your progress in certain on, on certain games that you jammed in the past. And if you want to keep updating it, that's a, a good server for uh, continued development on your own game jam and showing off progress. And last but not least, Interstellar Garden for you know hosting the game jam in, in entirely and having the Discord and everything for all everyone to kind of get together and you know it's a it's a game studio and also a community of creatives from around the world from every different discipline from art to design programming music all different kinds of fields and if you want to support these kinds of things going forward there's a patreon link in the description if you want to get some benefits within the discord for interstellar garden and also too to kind of get some more uh benefits for other things too there's different tiers that do different things uh yeah um yeah, go check all those things out. You don't have to do any of those things, though, if you don't want to. But if you do, that would be very much appreciated. And you might be able to find some other people in different communities and, you know, make some friends. And that's what all the game jams are about. It's all about making friends, making progress, learning, growing. And, yeah. But that's about it for me, I think. I'm going to open up these windows, turn on the fan, cool down a bit, and call it a night because it is 1 o'clock in the morning right now for me. The next jam won't be so late for me, and we'll be doing them earlier and earlier, and at least in my perspective. Uh, so that way, for folks that were not able to catch this stream, we can they could be able to catch the next streams. But yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah, um, thank you again all for everyone for joining me. I think I'm going to cut it right here. Have a good night, y'all. Peace.